Greetings, welcome back to Pink Oddbird. Today what I'm here to show you is how to make your own version of a mini CD sleeve using basic supplies. Stay tuned. I had made this the other day on one of my live streams, but I decided to come back and remake it. So as far as I can tell, the CD sleeve isn't made from any special paper. It looks just about like regular copy paper, which is what I have here. And to start, since we're making a mini one, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this piece in half. And then once I get it folded in half, just slice it down the center and set one of my pieces aside. The next thing that we wanna do is start making folds on the long sides of the paper. I didn't measure, but I'd say it's somewhere just shy of half an inch because what we're trying to do is get our formation for those side flaps. The next thing I'm doing is just folding the bottom piece up just like it is on the regular CD sleeve and then folding this top piece down so that we have our flap. All right, so now that we've done that, I'm just gonna unfold everything and we're gonna start cutting off the unnecessary bits. So as you can see, we have our score lines here and all I'm doing is coming in at a slight angle just in front of the score line. And when I get to the corner of that fold, I wanna miter it just like you can see it here on the CD case, so miter it up. So again, I'm angling at the bottom and then when I get to the corner, miter up. So we're gonna do the same thing at the top, except it's just reversed. So you're just going to still angle in because you want those flaps to be nice and neat and then miter it off when you get to the side. So you can, you can use your bigger CD sleeves as a template to see, but basically that's the gist of what you do. So of course you can leave this flap long if you choose to, but I want the closure flap to be a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it down And as you can see, this is what we have so far. The next thing we wanna work on is getting our circle. If you have a circle punch, you can use that. Uh, the first time I did it, I used the bottom of a soda can to measure out a circle. And as you can see, this time I'm doing it a different way. I didn't like that shape. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go in and try and make that circle a little bit better, making sure to not go beyond my score lines where the flaps are. So I like that shape a lot better. So for my see-through part, I'm using basic packaging. So if you've ever bought anything that you can see through, like um, Tim Holtz ephemera, anything like that, that comes in a bag kind of plastic thing, that's exactly what I'm using here. And it's a great way to upcycle it and still use it with giving it a second life instead of throwing it away. So all I wanna do is get this measured out roughly to where it will completely cover my circle on all four sides. So I want to make sure that it is just going to be right within those score lines that we've made when we folded those flaps over. So I'm good with that size. I'm just testing it out to make sure that it's going to fit. And it does. And I'm using two different sides of double sticky tape, double sided tape. So the skinnier one is going to be for the sides because there's a little bit less space. Remember, we are making minis here. So I'm just going to put that down right on either side of the circle. And then I'm gonna use the tape that's a little bit wider for the top and bottom portions. So once I get all of that tape down, I wanna burnish it to make sure that it sticks to the paper very well and peel off all those sides. And of course, the last step is going to be for us to place our plastic down. All right, so placing that plastic down, I'm just making sure that it's taut, but not too taut because I don't want it to sort of warp with the with pulling on either side. So now that we've got that down, as you can see, it's starting to really take shape and look like a CD sleeve. So what I wanna do next is get that background design in there. If you wanna do that, it's really simple to do. I'm just taking a piece of scrapbook paper on the side of the design that I want getting some glue on that back flap. And then I place the scrapbook paper just above the crease. And then once I've got that all glued down, I'm just gonna cut right around it. And just as simple as that, you have a nice, pretty looking background for your window. So you wanna make sure that when you fold those flaps, you put them behind the back flap, because if you don't, you're gonna have those that weird looking um, 
paper on the inside. So the next step is obviously to glue your flaps down. And at this point, we're ready to start using our fillers. So I have some extra fine glitter, some snow that you can pick up at your local craft store, and lastly, some red sparkly sequins. So obviously you can pick whatever you want, whatever makes it look pretty to you. I'm gonna start out with the glitter, sprinkle a bit of that in, and I'm just gonna give it a little tap here. You can see it looks pretty just like that on its own, like a little snow globe even. <laughs> But I'm going to keep going and add in a few of these sequins because they're super pretty. And lastly, I'm going to go ahead and get some of these snowflakes added in. Just a few, enough to make it look pretty. Shake it around, see how it looks, and I love it. So imagine how that would look with either like a word or photograph on the inside. And then of course you can decorate the outside however you see fit. So that is going to wrap it up for me for now. Be sure to stay tuned because you never know what direction this odd flock of ours is heading into. And until next time, toodaloo.